Yo, what up, it's Tog from We Make Best and we're here with the Dash deck tech. Dash is probably the best deck in the format right now, as seen by the most recent battle hardened results. Uh, Dynasty was a great set to aid all the heroes that needed a little bit of help to push their viability. Uh, decks like Azalea, Katsu, stuff like that. Uh, while also adding minimum upgrades for the strongest decks in the format already, like Oldham, Icelander and Fire. But for some reason, Dash, who was already arguably S tier, received some enormous upgrades for their deck from Dynasty. Uh, and we believe this to instantly shoot it to the top of the meta for this current ProQuest season. So let's get into this deck tech. So real quickly, we chose to go with the Wombat Dash as the main deck, but then we put in the option to convert into a full Mechanoid build to counter any decks that would try to fatigue Wombat Dash. So we'll start off with the main board, which is the Wombat version. And first off, we have the bread and butter of the main deck, which is your Rainbow Boost attacks of 0 to 60, zipper hit, throttle and t-bones. These cards in the wombat show allow us to race even the fastest decks in the format. But then since these cards also block for 3, they can easily block out the aggressive opponents while also fitting nicely into the mechanoid build as an easy block 3 to stall the game out while we set up for the mech. Next in the attack action slots, we also run pulse wave harpoon, combustible courier and high speed impact. These are some of the most powerful attacks as all these cards require blocks from the opponent. Pulse wave being the newest addition to the deck is one of the main reasons we believe leave Wombat Dash to be the fastest deck in the format now, as now we're able to essentially thought seize our opponent on top of it being already a 4 attack go again, which is borderline broken. Then to round out our attacks, we also run Maximum Velocity and Scramble Pulse. Maximum Velocity is just the perfect card for Wombat Dash, as we are barely ever blocking allowing us to get this insane 10 damage attack off whenever we draw it. Uh, next, we also play two Scramble Pulse instead of the regular payloads that people run. Uh, we found the effect on Scramble Pulse allows us to start the chain with it, and this persuades our opponent to not want to block with their equipment this turn, uh, which essentially forces cards out of the opponent's hand if they want to block instead. But then also you can do tricky things where if you play this card after the opponent has blocked with an equipment, especially if it has temper, uh, we can use the Scramble afterwards to try trigger the effect and just straight up kill the temper equipment so it's a super crazy versatile card and would recommend then lastly to round out our main deck is the item suite nothing special here we just run the stock standard three teclo cores three teclo pounders and three Spark of Genius. We run three of all the items in case we boost over them since we're gonna be not blocking and boosting a lot each turn. And on top of that, they also just super strong in multiples if you can get multiple of the pounders or cores out at a single time. And then also you gotta run three of Spark as it's one of the best chain enders in the game, letting us search for an item while also drawing a card for the arsenal as well. But then also it doubles up into the mechanoid game plan to let us find the hyperdrivers. So super busted in this deck. But yeah, that's essentially it for the Wombat Dash main board. Now let's get into the spicy cyborg plan that we run. So we have a clean 12 card cyborg being three constructed nitro mechanoid, three high octane, and then six hyper drivers, that being red and yellow. Then we also got Teclo Plasma Pistol and Visiotronic Model 1 to swap out for our Crown of Providence and Talashar in the main, since you need all mechanologist equipment for the nitro mechanoid. We also run one of Nolrun Gloves for the wizard matchups. This allows us to break out boots in these matchups but still keep AB3. So when we're converting our deck, we like to bring in these 12 cards. We look to replace our three max velocity, three combustible couriers, three teclo cores, and three teclo pounders. And like we said before, we're just doing this into any slow matchup that's trying to block out Wombat Dash and fatigue us. So instead we convert into this OTK combo mech deck. So yeah, that's the quick rundown for the Mechanoid. Real quick shout out before we get into some gameplay. Uh, these are some extra cards that didn't make our list, but we do find very powerful and fun to play. Uh, we'll start off with BIOS update. It's a super powerful card that we'd recommend, but the only reason we don't run it is because of our Wombat plan being centered around casting maximum velocity. So this doesn't help us with that. So that's why we ended up cutting it, but obviously it's still a very powerful card. Next is Payload. Uh, we did have it in the list as a powerful chain ender, but since it doesn't have boost, we found it awkward when we went to our mech plan since we're not able to cast payload and then attack with mechanoid in the same turn so just a little bit awkward there so we did cut them for the scramble pulse uh next one is a super spicy one it is actually time snap potion for the mechanoid plan uh this card is essentially a fourth high octane for your deck that you're able to play before you get the mech out and then you can just sit on it until it's time to pop off uh, another card we did have but we ended up cutting is meganetic shockwave another powerful card for the deck as we already run rainbow t-bone and scramble pulse this lets us just target the equipment loadouts of the opponent so a very strong card and very fun to play so if you want to try that out i would recommend that and lastly all the d reacts obviously if you do this you can't really have
have your Wombat Dash as your main board, so that's why we don't do it. But obviously it's a super solid plan as you can probably play Mechanoid into almost anyone in the meta currently. But yeah, nonetheless, still good. If you want to try that, give that a go. Okay, but that's it for the deck tech. Feel free to test the list out. We'll leave it in the description. But otherwise, let's get into some gameplay breakdowns to show you the Mechanoid OTK combo in action. All right, so let's get into these games. All right, so we're gonna go over two games here since we've got a transformative deck. Uh, we're gonna start off with the Mechanoid because it's fucking dope. And then after this, we'll show you how to play the main deck, which is the Wombat Dash, and just show you exactly how powerful that is as well. But yeah, so let's start it. So off the bat with the Mechanoid, uh, you're just looking to get your three hyperdrivers out and then cast Mechanoid as early as possible. Uh, not really looking to boost with any cards, so we're happy to block with everything. As you can see, we got a Spark, which is essentially a Hyperdriver, and we already have Mechanoid, so turn zero, he attacks for eight. We're gonna easily give up the two blocks. We're gonna save the other two cards though, as they're just gonna set us up for our plan. Um, and then here, yeah, we're just gonna pitch the Tecloplasma Pistol, because we wanna get cards out of our hand for the end of turn, so we can uh, power through our deck looking for extra hyperdrivers and then high octanes later on. But yeah, so now we're just going to pitch the blue for two, cast spark for x equals one for another hyperdriver, arsenal of the mechanoid, and we are chilling. So all we got to do is find a hyperdriver and then we're pretty set to just kill the opponent. Um, really awkward turn from the opponent. We've got three reds and a yellow, and they cast Aether Ice Vein. Um, since our hand isn't even that good, I'm pretty sure we opted to just AB3 and pay. Yeah, and then we paid the two. Um, unlike the Wombat Dash, we don't mind actually taking off turns. Especially if we can just like full block out and everything. Like we become more of a defensive deck when you're going like this. And since we're pitching it to AB, it actually keeps the cards in the deck, which is key. Because we don't want to fatigue out. You still have the possibility to be fatigued. Um, and then we find the third hyperdriver with the Spark of Genius. So the opponent is just Coronets peeking us. So super good for us. Obviously the hand is super awkward. Just pitch a random blue. Make sure you pitch, not discard. Because like before, you don't want to get fatigued. And then, yeah, so we're just going to cast the Spark to go find our third hyperdriver. And now we're set, ready to go. Next turn we can uh, cast the Mechanoid and then just start gaining the value instantly. Um, so yeah, back to the opponent. The opponent casts a Lightning Strike for a go again. Uh, so we can't block with a card from our hand because we're expecting a Coronet's peak after. Yep, yeah, so there it is. Um, and then we're going to pay with a random blue because keep in mind we've got to keep four resources. So yeah, we're gonna boost our T-Bone. This is gonna trigger our three hyperdrivers. And note that we don't have D-Reacts in our deck, so this will always hit. So there's no stresses here of hitting a D-React to not get go again and waste the counters. So we get three resources off that and get a block. And we even get a sink, so that's huge for us. Um, so we get the sink out of them. And now since we've got three resources and we've got five in hand, we can now just cast the Mechanoid. So casting the Mechanoid, pitching the Hyperdriver. And then we get to just smack them in for six overpower at the end of every chain from now, <laughs> from now on until the end of the game. Also note that it has five block with temper. And so the value's already starting. And a key thing to note here is we do sack our AB to the Nitro Mechanoid, but we've found that it's absolutely worth it. Like the power level of this card is just insane. Another key thing here is we are arsenaling the zero cost. We want to look to arsenal a zero cost boost or the high octane, or not or, it's for the high octane turns. We want the maximum amount of hand, uh, zero go agains for the high octane to gain the most amount of action points to let us just one shot the opponent. So that's why we keep that instead of boosting. Um, but the opponent does cast a yellow Aether Ice Vein, so a little bit awkward. Um, didn't quite catch what we were doing there. Looks like we took four and then just discarded a card because we want to turn the corner and just absolutely race the Icelander now since we have the Mechanoid out. Um, and then, yeah, so we're going to pitch the yellow, attack with Zipper Hit, 
and then I'm guessing we're gonna go T-Bone, follow up with Harpoon, take their best card out of their hand, and then follow that up with Mechanoid was the plan. Uh, but the opponent has a channel like Frigid, so a little bit annoyed with that, but that's fine. So the Mechanoid attack is gonna cost two more, which makes it cost two. But uh, lucky for us, we have two, two resources floating, so not bad. We still get to attack with the Mechanoid after the Zipper. And Zip is still coming in for five, so we gotta see if they wanna block this. Looks like no blocks, but the opponent does cast a Lizard there, which I don't think we mind, like we're happy. Because if he doesn't wanna block this, he's still gonna take five, and we're happy with that. We opt not to pay, because obviously the Channel Lake and the Frostbites are still in our way, so we can't attack with Nitro. Anyways. And it looks like the opponent activates Tunic because they want to Waney Moon us. That's fine, take three. And then they opt to take four just so they can keep a card to peek us and Arsenal. So they can keep around their channel lake. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, another bit of an awkward hand. All reds against this channel lake. Um, oops, sorry about that. Um, looks like we do just pay one to the Coronet's Peak with the Throttle since it's the most expensive card in our hand. Probably not going to be able to play it through the Frostbites and Channel Lake. Um, here it's a little bit awkward which card exactly we're going to play. Um, I'm guessing we can send the Zipper hit, pitching a red. And then you got one floating if they give us a thing. Uh, but they've still got the Channel Lake, so maybe we've got to attack with a T Bone. But even then, it's a little bit awkward. I don't mind attacking the T-Bone from Arsenal, though. Yeah. I'd probably try and keep the T-Bone in our hand. But yeah, we're going to attack for one here. So if the opponent gives us a Frostbite, we can still pitch the two reds to attack with Nitro. Um, if they don't, though, we can pitch to Nitro just with one of the cards. Keep the zero, I'd prefer. Yep, so we keep the zero. And then we still get to attack with the Nitro. Pressure their hand, take, they just instantly take six, so I'm a little bit scared to what the opponent's gonna present. Um, still no high octanes though. But as you can see, we're still pretty healthy, not at risk of dying yet. Um, and then the opponent casts an Ice Eternal for X equals three, so that's a lot of frostbites there. Uh, we have to take the three damage. And then they just pass back to us. Note that there was double ice, so I see why the opponent held it there because they get to keep out the channel lake. But the thing is, we get to keep our whole hand there so we can actually play through those frostbites in the channel lake here. The opponent from their hand, or from the arsenal, plays Polar Bast. Obviously, we've got to pay one. We don't want to give attack their attacks dominate on our turn. But no, that's fine. Um... But yeah, so we take the Frostbite, um, we're attacking for four. Looks like they mooned us as well, so we gotta take the three. Uh, we'll see how the opponent wants to deal with the four damage presented. So they do sink it, but I think we punish them for that with the Nitro and Mechanoid. So sure, that's fine. Now we can pitch the yellow to pay through the Frostbite and the Channel Lake to attack for six again. Still keeping this red T-bone in our arsenal just for when we find the high octane. So still no high octane, but as you can see, we're still <laughs> winning the race through all this disruption. It's just how strong this mechanoid is. Um, the opponent opts to attack us for seven with their line strike because they've already got an arsenal card, so that makes sense. Um, but yeah, since it's an attack, Nitro can actually block for five. Remember that, so <laughs> just chuck the five block in front, take two. And again, we get to keep a full grip. Note also that Channel Lake Frigid is dead, so we don't have to play around the extra resources now, which is super good for us. Opponents activating Spring Tunic to block with Iron High Gauntlets. Expecting another two block, maybe? No, they only want to block two. So it looks like they're trying to keep their hand here, but they are giving us Dominate. So obviously it's the correct decision for them because we don't really have good follow-up. Ah, but the opponent follows up with a Hypothermia. 
So we get the hypothermia out of them and then we find our high octane. So pretty lucky for us. Um, looks like we're gonna be able to full combo them next turn. But the hypothermia does shut down this deck if we don't have the high octane out for the extra resources. So kind of annoying, but good that they used it there. But yeah, so we use the mechanoid to block out the four from the scar for scar with go again. And then they follow up with a wounded bull so this one is going to put us into very low territory to where maybe the Iceland is able to kill us in response. So probably am looking to block three of it because if we take eight and we go down to seven, we die to any four damage in Waning Moon, which is a lot of their deck. But if we block the three, uh, take five, we go to 10, then they have to present 10 damage, 10 arcane damage, which is a lot harder for for the Icelander players, especially without Metacarpus. So yeah, that's fine. We'll take a little hit on our high octane turn. The opponent shows us that they had the Aether Hail. Obviously, we've got to take two and then the three from Waning. And then if they have the red Aether Ice Vein, exactly, then we're dead. But it looks like they don't have it. So super good for us. And then now we just have the high octane and then three go again spells to gain us three extra action points. So we're gonna attack for three, attack for two here, boost again, get another action point. We got one floating from the blue pitch, so we get to attack with zipper go again, boost it for another, another action point, while also coming in for five. And then that's going to leave us with four action points, so... And the opponent does sink below this as well, so I'm pretty sure the game is done, done. And then we just attack in using our extra action points for six overpower over and over. So that's six, then twelve. And the opponent just can't deal with it, so... But that's that for the Mechanoid. Let's get into the Wombat Dash version and run you guys through that one as well. All right, so let's get into the Wombat Dash version. Uh, always gonna start off with a Teclo Pounder. This card is essentially just for zero cards, deal six to the opponent. Um, so going into this game, it looks like the Rhino is going first and oh shit, they're starting off with the Blood Rush Bellow, so this is always a bad start for us. Um, really hoping to get our items intimidated here as they don't block already so and we get lucky banishes the teclo pounder not too bad not too bad and then let's see what the rhino wants to follow up with and then they follow up with another one so this is terrible hopefully they hit the teclo core no nah. okay takes our three block so already off to a rough start yeah, I don't think it can get much worse than this on a turn zero Rhino turn, so... And then they follow up with a wild ride. Really hoping that this one banishes the Teclo Core, otherwise we're not blocking this whole turn and maybe just get one shot. Um, and they also discarded a Beast Within, so they get to draw an extra card here, so... Uh, game's looking pretty doomed. But as you can tell, we wouldn't have showed this one if it didn't display the absolute power of Wombat Dash, so. It does intimidate our Teclo Core, so that's a good start. We get to block three. We take seven. And for some reason, take seven on turn zero is a good start. Um, but yeah, it's not really. And then the opponent follows up with a Savage Feast. So one of the best cards to follow up with. I'm surprised they don't crack their beating trackers there. As even if they draw a red, they could Mandible Claws us afterwards. Yeah, you can see Blake even hovered the beaten trackers there, like, wondering. But obviously, deal 10 is still pretty fucking good. Yeah, I think Blake even looked at the chest, wondering why he didn't just send it all, since our whole hand is intimidated. But that's fine, obviously, they just want to look for a good arsenal, and then they've got such a big health lead that they're pretty safe anyways. And then, yeah, so we finally get to start the game. We start the game on 23, so it's an uphill battle from here. Um, looking at our hand, it is actually a pretty good hand for our first turn, though, as we can boost the T-Bone and then pop our boots to play both our items, pitching our yellow. 
And yeah, that looks like what Blake is opting to do here. Yeah, so playing out both your items is essentially drawing a whole new hand, is how you want to see that. Playing out, having a Teclo Core and two Pounders out is pretty much having an extra turn because the amount of value that you gain from those. So Pounders essentially equaling uh, six damage each, so that's 12 damage, and then the core is four resources, which is pretty much the rate of a normal hand that you'll get from any deck. So that's why we opt to instantly play both of those, even though our turn is pretty low value, just five damage. Then the opponent follows up with another strong turn. They go blue barraging into a red pulping. And then they discard a wild ride. So it's coming in for six. I'm guessing wild ride was a good card and they didn't want to uh, discard that one. So lucky for us there. But happy to just chuck all the equipment in front and then the spare blue that we got. Just trying to keep our life total up. Uh, we get the option to sink, but obviously don't want to sink our red card since our other two cards are intimidated. But not too bad, we get to block out the eight, even though it's dominate. So very good for us, see what the opponent wants to follow up with. Hoping that they just have, oh yeah, so they just end up passing the turn. So obviously the discard was pretty bad for them. So we'll take that, we're happy for that. Now we get to start abusing our items. We just send in the zipper hit um, using the Teclo core resources. And then it gets pumped by four, so it's a nine go again. So maybe we can start to turn this game back into our favor. As you can see how strong this Wombat Dash is, as soon as you get some items out, even when we're down 20 health, uh, if the opponent stumbles once, we're allowed to take back that advantage. Even off a three card hand, as you can see. So absolutely insane. The opponent opts to block everything in front of the zipper hit, so already taking back the tempo, super good for us. Um, I believe we can follow up with activating our chest and then playing both the T-bones into a Talishar as well. That's probably what I'll do here. Yeah, it looks like that's what Blake's thinking about as well. So we just send both the T-bones in. Uh, there is an argument to just arsenal one of the T-bones, which I don't hate, and just play with a five card hand next turn. But I also don't mind just swinging it in. I guess we'll see what Blake wants to do here. Looks like he opts to keep an arsenal card, which makes sense. Just in case you draw a maximum velocity, you want the most zero go agains as possible. Uh, especially when we got a Teclo core out, so makes sense that he wants to keep it. Uh, we get a pretty expensive hand here. So the opponent does opt to just pass back, which is very good for us. So we might have just fought back into this game now. Um, but yeah, as you can see, our cards cost two and we have no blues or yellows in hand. So it's a little bit awkward. Uh, so hopefully the Teclo Core can do us good here. Looks like Blake opts to just send the T-Bone for six. This lets us boost to be able to activate our Teclo Foundry Heart, which will give us two more resources at the cost of one. So we'll go to three. Interested to see how Blake wants to play this turn out. Um, I'm probably looking at maybe a combustible into a zipper. Although, or oh yeah, I'm definitely looking at a combustible into zipper now because it's gonna require a double block to stop the combustible. And if he does double block, that means he's got no cards in hand for his own turn. Other plays is high speed into throttle and then Arsenal Combustible for next turn or something like that. Yeah, so there's a lot of lines. There's even maybe Zipper, High Speed into Zipper and then Pitch the Throttle to Talishar, which might actually be the most damage. But yeah, it looks like he wants to opt in for the Combustible Courier first, because like I said before, they've blocked with all their equipment, so if they want to block out this effect, they have to give us both the cards which is essentially a time walk for us. Uh, we'll be happy to instantly take another turn. And looks like that is exactly what they do. 
They're very good for us. Ah, interesting. So then he uses the one floating and one of the reds in hand to cast the throttle and box him for six. Uh, he didn't need a boost there though, so small little minor misplay there, but that's all right. Shouldn't matter too much. So now not only have we equalized the game, uh, we've also taken the tempo of the game as well. So the opponent is looking to block out as much as possible and try to take the turn and try to take the tempo back with a big turn but as you can see our this one bad dash is just way too consistent all our hands are just presenting 20 plus damage every turn uh, so we're going to start off with scramble pulse just smack them in for seven with the tech flow uh, one floating so we're going to use that one floating to activate chest chest gives us two resources so probably looking at a high speed into a zipper into a telashar activation or maybe Arsenal the throttle. We'll have to see what uh, Balake wants to opt in for. Because like I said before, usually you want to keep your Arsenal just in case you draw a max velocity and just have the highest chance of being able to actually cast it. As if you cast a max velocity, usually the game is just over. Like whether they block it out or not. Most of the times they can't though. Yeah, it looks like they took four from the high speed and then five from the zipper as well. So we get the arsenal with the blue throttle. Not the best arsenal, but it's an arsenal, so maybe it does help to cast max velocity if we draw it. Looks like we're checking the banish for max velocities. As you can see, there's only one banished. So high chance to draw one, but we don't draw one. But still, the hand's pretty good. We got six resources and we got six cost worth of cards that we want to play so always a good start but to the opponent looks like they crack their bark bone uh, they whiff on it so they gain zero resources and then they opt to cast the berserk is this just to uh, looks like they absolutely whiffed it so painful for the opponent that might just be game breaking or game ending for them as they've already stumbled once in the game before and then as you can see we took the whole tempo in the play yeah so as you can see uh, even when we start 20 life lower wombat dash is not only able to catch up to the life difference but we're actually able to just take the entire tempo of the game especially if they stumble on themselves as a rhino and then yeah so obviously you can see why we chose to make the wombat dash as our base deck uh this deck is just faster than any other aggro deck like in the entire game we believe even faster than most fires especially mask of momentum fire we're definitely faster than that and then not only that we also just have block threes instead of block twos in our deck and then obviously when you can convert into the mechanoid version of the deck like we showed before in the previous gameplay uh this deck just becomes absolutely broken so that's why we believe dash might actually be the best deck in classic construction for this uh, ProQuest season. But yeah, we're gonna leave the link to the deck in the description if you guys wanna test this out for yourself and just see how broken this deck is. But yeah, so hopefully you guys have fun with this deck and we out.